Hey everybody, uh, welcome and uh, I will bring this uh, regular meeting of Council to order for November the 5th, 2024. Result of the agenda for November 5th, 2024, regular meeting of Council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. All in favor? Resolve the minutes of the October the 15th, 2024 regular council meeting and the October the 29th, 2024 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor White. Any discussion? Any errors? Commissions? Correction? All in favor? It's carried. Four, 4.1. Resolve this regular meeting of council be suspended and council in the town of Swan River do hereby sit as board of revision to hear appeals on the assessment rule for the year 2025. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Midwood. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, I do uh, declare that the board open to hear applications against property assessments. Applicants and accessors may step forward to be sworn in. Jerry, can you hear us? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to state uh, or swear you in here and repeat I do if you agree, as well as the, the assessor. Do you affirm that the evidence that you're about to give to this Board of Revision is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Well, I do as well. So uh, two applications were received on the following five properties. Uh, from applicant Prairie Mountain Health, 334 8th Avenue South, roll 254000, owners appealing the assessed value and it's requesting a decrease. Uh, 1011 Main Street, roll number 71900, owners appealing the assessed value and requesting a decrease. 1000 Main Street, roll number 114900, owners appealing the assessed value and is requesting a decrease. Applicant number two, Justin Bolio. 1478 3rd Street North, roll number 227000. Owners appealing the assessed value and is requesting a decrease. 1482 3rd Street North, roll number 227100. Owners appealing the assessed value and is requesting a decrease. Okay, so then we'll deal with these uh, both separately. We will start with the Prairie Mountain Health. Uh, to all applicants, before we begin uh, the individual re reviews, if there's further information that you wish to provide to the board, that may not have already been submitted in your applications? If so, now is the time to submit that information. So, um, we have no representation from Prairie Mountain Health? Uh, sure. No, we do. That's Jared, I believe. From okay. Prairie Mountain Health. So, we'll let, I think we let uh, assessment yeah. go first, and then we'll go with the, uh, the Jared. So, you can proceed. So, just the rules. Uh, we, think we don't get a debate with each other. Uh, we'll hear what assessment has to say, and then the, the, the um, chair, uh, what did you say his name is again? Applicant. Chair. The applicant okay. uh, has a chance to speak to, and then we'll go from there. So go ahead. Uh, just the first property after having a discussion with Jarrett, we are just looking, this would be roll number 71900. We are just looking for confirmation on the assessment so we can move forward to the municipal board. And do you agree with that, Jarrett? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Should I just fire through all three of them? So they're, all, they're all going to be confirmations. Yeah, go yeah. Okay, roll number 114900, uh, 1000 Main Street. And we are looking for confirmation on that assessment too to move to the municipal board. And then our last appeal, uh, 254000. 
Uh, we are looking for confirmation on that also to move to the municipal board. And does the applicant have anything further? No. Okay. So then I guess we can move right into the uh, resolutions. So 4.11, resolve that the appeal with respect to the 2025 assessment on rule number 25400 of the town of Swan River be received, be it further resolved that the 2025 assessment rule 25400 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor uh, Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 412, resolve the appeal respects the number, uh, to the 2025 assessment rule on rule number 71900 of the town of Swanwick be received. Be it further resolved that the 2025 assessment on rule number 71900 be confirmed. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 413, resolve the appeal with respect to the 2025 assessment on rule number 114900 in the town of Swanover be received, be it further resolved, the 2025 assessment on rule number 114900 be confirmed, moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, so then on the next, uh, do we have anyone here representing this uh, appeal? Is Marcel on? No. no. <clears throat> so then, therefore, if this individual is not here, then we can dismiss this? Uh, the board can dismiss uh, the appeal or you can confirm it. Okay, so. So we shouldn't do it. Pardon? Whatever the board wants to do. Okay. So I guess I ask the board then if we do that by uh, a motion or something like that, or what is that? Or just a. Uh, okay, so someone throws a motion to dismiss them, we can. Otherwise, what's on here is okay. to be confirmed. Fair, fair, fair enough. Go ahead. Confirm. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so resolve that the appeal uh, with respect to, to, the, to the 2025 assessment or rule number. I just want to add so that the board knows that when you confirm them, this does allow the, the applicant to go to the municipal board. If we dismiss them, it stops that process and it's tracked. So just so you know exactly what's going on. Okay. Anything further on that? Okay. Vote on that. Resolve that the appeal from respect to the 2025 assessment on rule number 22700 of the town of Swanover be received. Be it for the result of the 2025 assessment rule 22700 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Resolve the appeal respects to the respect to the 2025 assessment on rule number 227100 of the town of Swanwick be received. Be it further resolved, the 2025 assessment on rule number 227100 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbing. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 415. Oops. Oh, there's only two, sorry. Okay, so then I guess if that was uh, all that we have, then uh, I do thank everybody that did attend this evening. And uh, you may leave if you choose. You can stick around with us as well. It's up to you. There's a clock. Two, resolve that the Board of Revision hearing now be adjourned and the regular meeting of council uh, resume. Moved by. Councilor Bobic, seconded by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Good See you. Thanks, Good night. Good night, Jerry.
So then uh, on next on the agenda was uh, an appearance by uh, Staff Sergeant Henson, um, thinking that he would not uh, be able to come tonight, so he'll uh, have to postpone that to one of our next meetings. So we'll move on to uh, 6 and 6.1. Resolve that the letter dated October the 1st, 2024, regarding a traffic light at 415 uh, 431 11th Avenue South from Dennis Adamchuk and Carla Vopney be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any mm -hmm. discussion? Councillor Bentwood. Uh, the amid notes indicate that this could be put into the budget for 2025, but when exactly and how are we would, would commence on making that happen? Uh, so I have it in the budget right now for 2025. Uh, so if it passes, then as soon as the budget's passed, uh, we can do it. Or if the council's in favor of putting it in, we just have a resolution to do it. Uh, we can do it right away, like in 2025, because it wasn't a budget in 2024 for the lights, unless the council wants to add it. Further discussion? Council Albert? It's, it's more of a street light than traffic light. That's right, right. street light, yes. So yeah. who, who's involved in putting that light on? I drove a hydro. So it's uh, just under $7,000, but to put up a pole and put a line to it. Like you two both have your hand up at almost the same time, so you want to go first. But it's the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Harvey, there's, uh, I drove by there, there's a, like a, an eight-year note, it says there's a, a light on the corner of uh, uh, 11th, and then there's one at the corner on uh, 4th South also, and it, they're looking for one in the middle. Uh, is there a reason why they want one in the middle where, just by eyeballing it and stuff, that at the distance between the two existing street lights out there are similar to the distance between existing street lights in town? Like, is there an issue, or what, why is there specifically requesting additional lighting in between those two? Uh, they're just requesting additional lighting so that for, as you say, uh, as far as like security and whatever, that people can see better around their yard. Uh, so that's why I added it. Budget not as a for sure, but if council approves it to go ahead, because yeah, there is one at fourth, or there is one at spruce. There's one on each end of the block far, there, yeah. so it's like, so and then the distance the between block. those two lights is no different than the distance between the lights on any other street, so I'm just so just I'm just gonna uh, mm -hmm. say, um. The resolution is on the correspondence from uh, Mr. Adam Chuck and Ms. Balcony, not on the debate of whether or not we're going to install a traffic light. So I think that uh, that item for discussion will do come up with when we're in the budget process. So on the correspondence. Go ahead. Um, just want the wording of the resolution changed because it is confusing when it says traffic light. I'm like, why are we putting a traffic light on 11th Ave South? It didn't make sense to me. So it just says street light. That makes more sense. Need a mover and second. Okay, so mover to uh, amend the uh, the resolution. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be Councillor uh, Bullitt, and second by Councillor Bobbitt. And we'll vote on that. So, all in favor of the amendment? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, Councillor uh, Midwood. Can I propose that we maybe have admin do up a report for council as to what the current standard distance is between street lights throughout the town? And also maybe if there are any dark spots in the community and maybe we can prioritize a list of and or update if one is existing and prioritize when and where we're putting money in street lights there there is and we can definitely provide that. there is a standard distance between them. okay 
So back to the resolution uh, on the letter. Uh, any other further discussion? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Six point two. Result the letter dated October the eighth, two thousand twenty-four regarding the 2025 MBCS fundraising campaign from Manitoba Crime Stoppers be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor White. Any discussion? Councilor Medwell. Uh, can we respond with letting them know of our grant application process? Or would this letter suffice? I don't think it would, but so if they wish to pursue um, funding, they can you know, apply through the grant funding process. I think that would be fair. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3, resolved the uh, response letter dated October the 15th, 2024, uh, from Lisa Naylor, Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, be received, moved by Councilor Powell, second by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, I know the resolution speaks to just receiving the letter. It's part of the contents with the, uh, the mowing of the ditches and that. I think there's a misconception of what we're asking there. Just, I think she's referring to just like two more lists of cutting the shoulders and not getting to the bottom of the ditches with the brush and the willows that uh, they seem to neglect that's growing out of control there in Lassa. Um, as regards to that and then I guess when we meet with them or further discussions regarding the potential crosswalk and those uh, uh, bowl boat options that they insisting that we put in at their cost uh, I think we need to relate some of our conversations with them when we meet with them next about where we're working with that moving forward I think that it would be also helpful on the, on the mowing part if there was uh, maybe some visuals, some pictures that we can provide to the minister. Anything further? Uh, Council White. Relative to your comments with the ditch road 275, so the department expects to have the design memo delivered to the town sometime in the fall of 2024. We're there. Is there any indication that there's something coming on ditch road? Uh, we haven't seen the study yet. Pardon? We haven't seen the study yet. We're expecting it based on this letter. Perhaps a query since you have, it appears you have the design delivered to the town in 2024. What, what's its status? We'd be interested. A lot of the people that work in our town come in on that road. It's been several years. We've been okay. waiting for action. Anything further? Councilor Mavic. I guess my question is on crosswalk there. It's, uh, taking it to Rasmus. One. Of course, that would be so flash. So, I believe we're all in favor of this thing slowing the traffic down on Main Street or at those intersections with no frills and all that. I really find this hard to grasp that you're going to let the person using the crosswalk slow the traffic down or like a piece of highway. Is there no way we can just put a crosswalk in without the lights? Again, I think that'll be probably something that we'd have to talk with the minister and council and okay. uh, committee can maybe have a discussion about that. Okay. That's what you'll be very Thank you. Okay. Any further thing, uh, Councilor Medro? I believe the answer to that was no, because there's too many lanes of traffic to clear at one time. And my thoughts on it, especially since we have had a death in the past in that area, that at the very least we put this out to the public and ask them how they want their tax dollars spent. So if it's coming down to municipal dollars, then maybe put it out to the public and see and if there's an overwhelming response that they want the money spent to make that a safer um, corridor for pedestrians, then the will of the public is what we to serve. Okay, on the, on the letter, uh, anything further? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.4. Resolved the letter dated October the 17th, 2024, the Honorable Tracy Schmidt, Minister of Environment and Climate Change, regarding a recycling rebate as part of the waste reduction and recycle program, support program 
we received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bullchuk. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. I have two questions. The first one is the $9,743.38 that we're receiving for six months. How does this compare to previous rebates? Is it lower, higher, on par? I couldn't answer that. Yeah, we need it. Do you have that info? On par. Councilor uh, Borja. Is there any way we could send some responding correspondence asking them for, um, and maybe this isn't the right, I guess, place um, to do it, but if there's any statistics on the amount of recycling that actually gets recycled versus ends up in a landfill. Like, is, is the government taking any statistics on this, or? That means they have to watch it get done. So the, the answer to that is definitely not. They would be provided with stats from their contractors, which the government doesn't contract right now. Municipalities do by themselves. So Sweet. the government doesn't, they don't mandate that information. So we require directly with OSS. Then. Yeah, for, and that would only be OSS. There's how many other companies yeah. that do it in the province. So to get a whole, like we've asked that quite a bit. You, you can get lucky asking individual contractors. When I talked to OSS, it was 10 to 15 percent. Gets recycled? No, go to a lot. Do we have that in writing? Uh, that was a phone call that I had. I can send an email. It would be nice to get something in writing from them. That's it. Okay. Uh, call someone that would. Uh, my second point is to voice my concern yet again on the fact that for six months our rebate is one fifth, not even half. Like we're spending fifty thousand dollars a month for recycling services, and we're getting less than ten thousand back for six months in a rebate. So. We need to put some serious thought into what we're putting out to provide recycling and maybe that needs to go in the communication to the province because we cannot sustain it, not on a municipal level. So they either need to pick up that pace with the MMSM rolling it out province-wide or they need to offer us some better rebates and or solutions because we cannot keep spending 50000 because that price just keeps going up. Uh, Councillor Bobbitt. Well, this is the electronic ones, right? Which I like. No, no. It, it says electronic funds transfer is what you're needing there. But this is for uh, recycle uh, support. Definitely, uh, this is a big uh, topic of discussion that we've had for several years during budget and all that. But uh, definitely, the cost of recycling in this community has uh, is, is substantial and uh, something that. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we need to take a look at uh, CFO Benita. Uh, that figure uh, that was quoted for monthly recycling is, is for all recycling, residential and commercial. This rebate is only for residential. So the cost of residential recycling last month was just over 20000 Okay, thank you. All right, so any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, I see that we have Staff Sergeant Henson with us, and so I think with Council's uh, consent, uh, we'll stall us here on the agenda and we'll go back uh, to reception and delegations and uh, give uh, uh, Sergeant Henson, uh, Staff Sergeant Henson an opportunity to uh, speak. Welcome. Just for your information, we have CFO Ganita on, on video with us okay. tonight, too. Okay. Right. Okay. What did you like for a starting point? 
Um, it's gone off of my agenda. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's gone off of my agenda. You can't just scroll up. But either way, we have the, we can start with the objectives and goals. Oh, right, never mind. I'm sorry, it's here. Um, okay, uh, RSMP uh, uh, objections and goals to report. Okay. Objections? And goals. Oh, sorry, objectives and goals report. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm looking at uh, section three, management of the police services objective. Three one is uh, objective priorities and goals for 2024-25. Community police presence. Um, essentially, I know that we were going to do the bicycle patrols, but we're getting into the colder weather here, and we haven't really got that taken off for us. Uh, the community stuff is more to do with committees that I've been attending. And it's basically uh, community safety, well-being. There's a steering committee, and then there's a main committee. And then we've got like the interagency. We have uh, communities that care, and then we have um, community mobilization. And we also have the needles program. And essentially, I stayed with that just to find out, to be knowledgeable of what's going on. And I know there's been a little bit of uh, tenseness with this and, and uh, there is there's purpose <clears throat> to be talking to the provincial and, and federal people and essentially that uh, um, <clears throat> it seems to be a work in progress. And then there's the JAS unit Essentially, that's uh, nearing completion. But there'll have to be some more review, and that's to do with the GS business case that I'm speaking about. Because we're running that parallel to what you people have been doing with the province and, and getting that unit in here. Um, <clears throat> as, as you're aware, the GS unit is, will be, and always will be separate from uh, detachment uh, duties and, and, and spaces that are filled and whatnot, we won't pull one to fill the other. Um, <clears throat> property crime, there's been different things happening. There's been communication between, well, the community with safe communities under manageable justice, but there also has been from my office, specifically myself, as well. And they're moving ahead with what they can. Uh, there's a forfeiture fund initiative, so I'm not sure where we are with that. Usually with forfeiture fund initiatives, in my past experiences, the community presents it to some agencies, some people, and then I review it, and then I put my support, and I do a write-up, and then I sign off, and then show that the local RCP supports it, and then we hope that the money comes through. Everyone I've seen over the years have been well-written and easy to support. With the frequent school interactions, essentially with that, um, we're still maintaining them, and we'll have one as as recent as tomorrow. We don't have the same <coughs> numbers of personnel to be as involved as we like to, but we, we still do them, operations permitting. Uh, the safe schools plans, they're all up to date, and that's essentially where one of our DSAs is in contact with the various principals and update uh, the school plans as far as the layout of their buildings, if there's any uh, extra outside buildings or renovations, who is the principal, the teachers, and make sure that we have a communication. We know They know who our contact person is, we know who theirs is, and they know who the school liaison officer is. And that was dealt with pretty much in September and into October. Uh, presentations of drugs, bullying, and cyber crimes, that, kind of gets blended in a little bit here and there with the schools. Police offender checks, that's pretty much a common thing from week to week. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, prolific offender checks. Um, basically we have Marnica Valley, she kind of, our sergeant uh, heads that. And we have different people contributing to it and they look for curfew checks. Um, see if they're breaching their release orders and whether they be on probation, usually it's probation, sometimes it's parole. 
and essentially the idea with that is if you're breaching it, then we want you we want you to see if we can get enough together to get you remanded. We want you out of the community because <clears throat> you got released, you didn't do your full sentence, or you have an early release, then essentially that if you're not adhering and following the conditions, you shouldn't shouldn't be here. And then with uh, <clears throat> the RCP communication with uh, Initiative One, we've been sending the crime stats monthly, and then you have the other uh, months and years to compare. And with uh, <clears throat> local community groups and RCP and looking at the root causes of crime, that's that's ongoing. I think most of us. Everybody here at this table would have a pretty good idea what they are. It's, amongst other things, it's, it's addictions, it's mental health, it's uh, houselessness. And we seem to be attracting people still uh, from other communities. And essentially, that that's, doesn't bode well for us, but essentially that sometimes they've been here in a distant past or they have some family or something, but we don't really know them. Um, <clears throat> This homicide over the weekend, the victim was from Brandon. That's, that's interesting. I mean, everybody knew one another, so um, it, it wasn't it wasn't a random act. And our major crimes people are still with us, and they might be here with us another couple of days. It all depends how they get together. And we've had a couple of people remanded. Uh, the third one they were working on, and there was a couple of search warrants that over the weekend that were executed as well. You mentioned the, the comment about uh, individuals coming to the community like from elsewhere um, that might pose problems. I know you didn't say it that way, but um, do, you, do you know what that number might look like as far as individuals? I, I don't know what that number is. It's just every once in a while we'll see that somebody, hey, you, you don't belong, we, we don't know you. Maybe you are here a long time ago. Um, we have, and I think it hit social media, maybe even the media, I'm not sure, about uh, this couple that's got into trouble elsewhere now they're here and they, they harm pets and they do their social media thing, so that kind of just parachuted in on us. Uh, there's another one that's uh, a serious offender that committed crimes in Winnipeg and then he's here. But he does have some relatives, but we don't know him because he hasn't been here for a long, long time. Uh, we get from time to time Winnipeg courts releasing people into our area, which I don't know how great the numbers are, but each time you recognize one, it gets your attention. I know some of the feedback from the peers, as you would call it, those ones that are connected with community mobilization and harm reduction, that there's every once in a while I'm hearing that they're seeing people they don't recognize. And for whatever reason, I, I don't know. Uh, what numbers, I think is enough to notice, and it doesn't take much to notice either because these are fearful people and with their addictions too, that uh, their state of mind changes from, from time to time or fairly quickly. JS unit implementation. Um, I, I guess the best is when I've had conversations with there cool and kind of got a feel for it because I wasn't really sure and that's part of the reason we're running the parallel GIS business case. Okay, here's one about um, focusing on prolific repeat offenders relating to petty thefts. <clears throat> um, we don't have the resources to go to every call and that's not really something new but what we're doing is um, Sergeant Marty Carvelli is going to be going to three of our businesses and speaking to them if she hasn't already. Uh, we had conversations just last week and she's going to be doing it this week. If she can get out, essentially that uh, working with them and who are what we see as the prolific offenders in their area and their store and who they see and sort of a cutoff for amount. Uh, the, <clears throat> the retailers have been really good, especially the large ones. Essentially that they're, they, they're selective. Um, what to call in sometimes that we want them to call in regardless so we can keep stats on this and essentially that we'd have somebody collect these and look at them which ones we investigate are they prolific within the community or is it somebody's on warrant is it somebody that we've got other uh, 
investigations or charges on and they're not bef yet before the courts or perhaps they are and this is something we're quite interested in and a lot of the time uh, the people that are committing these uh, shoplifting and they're doing over and over again uh, not the majority but a lot of the time that they're we're, we're familiar with them we're wanting them for other things um, <clears throat> some of these people are they'll be doing the and they'll be stealing the copper, they'll do the minor break-ins, they'll be doing the shoplifting, and then they get into something that's a person's crime, they end up in their cells for both of those reasons at different times. Then essentially that sometimes we get remand, sometimes we don't. It's still difficult with property crimes, and uh, we have a couple of people in the community right now that uh, I feel they shouldn't be because of what they've done. And, but essentially the judiciary is the judiciary, and then the Crown has the reasons and also the courts have the reasons if they get <clears throat> come back after remand or they've been convicted and they serve time but the the number of charges are stayed and then we've been having communications and asking why and then essentially if there's something we can do better then we want to do better and if there's something that we don't understand then we can we talk to district on a regular basis and they have their own liaison with their local crown senior crown prosecutor And the CCTV, I don't know if there's really been much of a change recently, but uh, and they're in place to a certain degree, as, as you know. And essentially that, I think with the COPP, they probably pretty much got their policy, but we're not there yet. And they have to decide what, what involvement they would have that Corinne is better at addressing that than myself. It's just conversations I've had with Detlef in, in the past, who's uh, the chair of the provincial COPP. Then on page four at the top there, and <clears throat> part four, it gives a comparison of calls of service, urban, rural, drug, drug enforcement, impaired driving, uh, theft under 5,000, just 20, 2024, 2023, just for comparisons. The resource overview in, in five, Essentially, that uh, are we in? Okay. It's good to see that we're, we're sticking with recruitment. We've here Depo is is doing much better than previous years. They are doing better, and essentially that uh, the division is being uh, innovative and uh, having conversations with Ottawa to increase it beyond what we've been getting. So we actually I've had a couple of emails come to me that are quite hopeful and uh, quite positive. We're not in camera? We are not. Okay. Because originally it was supposed to be in camera. Okay, that's pretty much it for what I've got with this report. Okay, anything on, uh, any questions from council on this or anything else? Uh, I'm not sure I expect you to have the answer, uh, Staff Sergeant. But when I read numbers from the PMAs that we have given out a half a million needles in one year last year in our community, and I appreciate they might go to Russell and Bell, I appreciate that. I have a size back, but I like to think, is there any data? Do you guys have any evidence that our people are buying? Because there's no way they could use. I don't believe that many meetings with the number of people. If there's somebody, I suspect somebody's buying. Do you have any evidence that that's happening? No, no to both parts. I have no idea how much. Uh, we have no way to track it from our RCMP point, and we have no um, suggestion that somebody's buying them. That's not come forward to us. Uh, the other thing is with the <clears throat> PHA, or Prairie Mountain Health, RHA. Regional Health Authority, essentially that uh, with the needles people and such, I think they mentioned that they've been looking into it, but I don't have any numbers. And it'd have to come from them, not me. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Edward? Yeah. I have a couple points. First one, the monthly stats that were mentioned, I believe we requested in the past for them to be shared with Council um, 
I don't believe we're receiving them yet, so it would be great to have those starting to come our way on a monthly basis. Uh, in response to the CCTV, uh, Manitoba COPP, we do have our policies, liability waivers, agreements in place. It's available to be used in any community or municipality that operates a COPP program. It just simply needs the partnership with an organization that has a uh, CCTV program in place. So we have our ducks in a row and we're squared up there. And since COPP was brought up, I feel this might be a good place to mention that at our annual conference in AGM on October 26th, uh, Staff Sergeant Steve Hansen was awarded our Lifetime Membership Award. It's an award that is given to a non-COPP member for their support to the program. And Steve has been a tremendous support, not only on a local level, but he was one of the ones locally who assisted the board in our process with regards to the CCTV policies and uh, agreements. And he also made sure that it got up to Division D's uh, criminal operations department. Yes, it's criminal operations. Should be reviewed by them to ensure our members would be safe and protected with what we have in place. So. As well as our litigation people, but that's a separate where we also advise that is in the opinion you have to see a lawyer in order to get the legal opinion and just some of the things to look at and then they took care of that. Yeah, and we did have a vetted through a uh, law office as well. So we have our ducks in a row. And yeah, Sir, Staff Sergeant Steve Henson received the Lake membership. I do need to connect the feed to hand it off and do a photo op, but mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Moria. Um, Mr. Henson, uh, Go back to the, the GIS and something you had mentioned that currently working uh, with, on a, a business case. I'm a little bit confused on that because we've been working on that and the predecessor was supposed to be having that all drafted up to move forward that when the municipalities uh, did get together and agreed to move forward with that and sign the request that, that all that work was supposed to have been done on the background uh, uh, and that was uh, confirmed with uh, I guess D division in that uh, when we had met with them that they were fully aware and making preparations in the background. So I'm just a little bit confused that usually business cases are on the front end, but here we've already been asking for that. We've asked to uh, to have the, uh, the membership increase to form the GIS, and understanding that under the contract there's 12 months to get additional members put into place under the contract. So I just I don't know what's going on in in your organization, like RCMP as an, an entity, as to what's taking so long when a lot of this was, it's not a surprise, and it was a lot of it was being uh, relayed to us that members were almost like putting their hands up to come here and we're, we're flipping the bill. Why is it taking so long? We just so if I can, just like council know. There's, there's no obligation for the RCMP to respond to that and, or at least finish it until July 25. So they get 12 months from when we put in our application formally, according to our NPSA, the agreement that we signed, they get 12 months to respond. So just so everybody's aware of that. So and it doesn't mean it can't be done in shorter, just letting it, there's no obligation to do it. And right. like, yeah, I, I could see that if we put a request in out of the blue. If this was uh, a project that's been uh, with uh, Mr. Hansen's predecessor that's been worked on for a number of years before that uh, with the officers and the division was fully aware that we were working on that and they were working in the background in, in preparation for that for us to actually put in the request. So I don't know if that's something that you can answer or is that something that we need to bring I, I, up? I can't really give a, a hard and fast answer, but there was a lot of, I know there's a lot of communication between Operation Strategies Branch mm -hmm. and with our office. Um, the business case didn't start until after it took command, the formal one. The, and basically at one point with the conversations and that, and what you, the way things unfolded in my, in my understanding is a little bit different than expected because you guys took the lead and you pushed hard. 
Uh, back when Staff Sergeant uh, Cliff McKay was here, I was operations NCO, he was a commander, and we were working on a GIS, getting one, and we, we tried it different times with different commanders here, including uh, Ray Campbell. But it started with Cliff McKay, and essentially that uh, we were pull we had, we were always running surplus. Like we, at that time we had 15 consoles, and we, we, we would have 16 to 18 frequently. We pulled two people from the floor, and then basically I got permission so they can, they can grow a beard when they're out of uniform. It wasn't allowed back then. And essentially, they could be in plain clothes when they're doing GIS type of things, but they weren't GIS. And they had to go through certain people at certain levels in headquarters in Winnipeg to get the permissions. They had to be supported both by district and by headquarters. And we're basically, we're, they were, we'd have them doing plain clothes stuff, and then they'd have to get a uniform to help deal with the calls to service and, and whatnot. And essentially, that uh, we started losing some of the surplus that we had. And essentially, we couldn't maintain this, and so it's been something that we've been working on for a long, long time. And when Joe Duncan was here, he had lots of communications, with operational strategies branch, which is key uh, because because they're the, they they look after the structure and uh, basically what's approved and who and the officers who sign off on it. And essentially, that that was what was happening on the RCMP side, but the business case itself didn't occur until after I became commander. And then we started working on that because I felt the information I was getting because I was making phone calls trying to find out, okay, we need to do this and just because we're running the peril. It's something that's driven by the town, and which I hadn't seen before. And like I said, we were doing all the way back to when Cliff McKay was here probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. And essentially that uh, we have some traction here and we have some time to get it in. And I'm monitoring, and essentially this needs to be done because we want this JS to happen. The other thing about the JS compared to what we were doing when Cliff McKay was here, or, and I also did the same thing when I was in the acting. There's, there's been two times where I've been acting for over a year with no staff sergeant. So I, I went back to the JS thing where I, when I could to, to the way I could, and then again we start using traction. But the difference now is that <clears throat> when the JS comes here, we don't lose bodies to the detachment. If we're, if we're low on detachment, we have to deal with that in different ways through district, and then basically look at working with our call-out systems that we have, and basically uh, getting district to advocate and get people to come. <clears throat> and they do have relief people in that, but essentially they mostly go to the north. There's lots been happening here. Um, first off, my last check was a couple, three weeks ago, depots were in full capacity. Uh, that's not good enough. So basically, our crops officer and a commanding officer, uh, the assistant commissioner in, in McMurchie in, in Winnipeg, he's he's been in constant communication with Ottawa, and essentially that uh, we're we're bumping up in higher priority that we we need to get the bodies here, and I'm quite hopeful, and essentially that uh, it's going to take a bit. We're doing we're we keep we're staying afloat, but we work best at a certain number. But essentially, we're pretty junior, but we've got some pretty keen guys. And over the weekend, it was really good to see because our young guys and gals were getting really switched on and, and working with major crimes. Because major crimes, when it comes to a homicide, they take carriage of the file, they control the information, they do the re media releases. And essentially, that, uh, but we have our people with a number of tasks. They make sure they know where to go, who to f where, who's related to who, where to find them, uh, where the streets and addresses are and essentially the common places that people hang out and et cetera. So it's a really a good team thing. So we had our seasoned MCU team, and then we had our, our young constables helping out and some, uh, with some service, but we're fairly junior. And what's really good right now is, as you're aware, that we have Rusty and Cole here as our senior guys. And uh, basically we have another senior constable. We hope that he'll be uh, operational be over the next few weeks. And essentially that'll really beef things up. So, so with, with that, did I hear you right? But you need to present the business case, and if we may, they then your uh, for the business. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, said that they may, hopefully, that they will bring a JS here. Is that what? I don't, I don't, I didn't hear the word hopefully. Basically, what happens is you got to have some final reviews, and I have to review the final copy too, and then there might be some changes, tweaks, and then operational strategies branch has well district will have to review, and then operational strategies branch. Uh, Branch will may offer some suggestions or tweaks. They've been involved from the beginning, anyways. And the person that's writing it right now has been in constant communication with OSP, anyways. 
but when it's about a finished product, we need that final reviews at different levels, different set size. I'm very optimistic. I don't, I don't feel there's, there's not going to be a me because of um, the business case. It's really going to be. I think you guys pretty much have everything in, in order. That you guys are the major push. Like, like I've said, that we've already tried with two different commanders, and where I was one of the people pushing, and but we didn't have support from the town. We didn't have the the, um, the eye or attention ear of uh, of the province and such. And we're we're kind of on our own, and it's a hard thing to do. <clears throat> but we were we were hoping to do it. We, we we did the best, and now it's just a totally different world. And I'm, when it, you guys really dug into that, I was just sat back a little bit and said, "Wow, this is pretty good." Okay, so and then just one other point here that I guess it's developing as of this afternoon, um, and and I guess it's in relation to another incident that happened on the weekend, and the media release that came out this afternoon. It's um, I think it's a, it's creating some stir out there because it's quite vague. Uh, I swear, it says on November 2nd, uh, Swan River RCMP responded to a report of a 24-year-old male having assaulted several people and is now walking around the community with a firearm. As officers arrived in the community, information was received. It, uh, throughout the release, it just says community. So, um, But then further on, it says Farther up north, arrests were made at a stop, traffic stop up in, in Math Kingston. Um, there's a lot of, I guess, on the heels of the incident that, and the homicide that happened on the weekend, uh, on top of this, without clarity as to which community that's actually occurring in, uh, there's a lot of speculation. Is that in Swan River? Is that in, that, in another community that's farther north to us? So, without that clarity, on a, uh, maybe you can bring that forward to your public relations staff that. There's some unnecessary anxiety and apprehension um, starting to flow as a result of that with rumors of okay, trying to speculate which community that is. So, uh, so just if you can bring that, I don't know. If, uh, I'm looking at the media release right here. Like I didn't have any control over this. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to do with this one. Yeah. And the major, the murder, the homicide, that would be major crimes only. This one here came from our office. But anyways, to <clears throat> The copy I have, it says Sapatawa Cree Nation, Manitoba. Okay. And it gives a file number, and this says RCP, uh, Swan River RCP, laid numerous charges in a robbery. It was all up north. It wasn't in town. Yeah. yeah, so like in the official RCP release that came out, it doesn't mention that community at all. So that's where, on the heels of that, people are speculating from one, and there's a lot of anxiety. Okay, was that, did that all happen at the same time as the other incident? And there's a lot of, this was on November 2nd. Yeah, correct. And basically, if there was a previous one, I don't have it in front of me, mm -hmm. but the one I have spells out SAP. SAP the right. Yeah, this was SAP the released six hours ago from RCP Manitoba. Six, six hours ago. You can look into that, yeah. um, Councilor White. I have two questions. One, one, one is for clarification. I'm reading the, uh, the RCP and sitting here on the quote. Uh, a 16 year old male for swan was charged with second degree murder and remanded into custody. What does that mean? He's held. He's, he's held in jail? Yeah. Okay. And That's then he goes before problem. a provincial court judge, and the provincial court judge de decides if he's further held. Okay, That's good to hear. The second 16 year old male has also been arrested and remains in police custody. Is that the same thing? Um, the second one, I believe, was remanded as well. I don't like the quote like that, but this is a, a Bill's interesting thing, and I think I read it from the police report also. Okay, yeah, there's, there's the second one difference. remains in custody, police custody. Yeah, and, and that one says remanded into custody. If they're both the same thing, why wouldn't they say the same thing? Are you getting that from a civilian website, yeah. Facebook? Yeah. Well, think think it, should, it might be right, it might be wrong. I don't think we should be quoting that. Yeah. That's we, why I'm asking him. Okay, but you're criticizing a public person. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just asking for the difference between the two terms. Okay. If those terms were what you guys did release, if they didn't, of course you didn't. Okay. This is released. This went out through major crimes unit. This is from the media. Yeah. I'm not saying you guys did it for a second, but I, I think I read it with the RCMP also, and I was mixed up. If one says remanded in the custom, the council of White, jail. The, if it, the media, if that's the media's comment, that's different than what the RCP, who makes the official statement, not the media. I agree, but that's not what the question is. I believe the RCP said the same thing. 
and I will find out. But they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're the same thing, are they? They're, no. They're different things. No, they would have said uh, it remains in police custody it means he's probably in our cells, but uh, I'd have to double check. But That's I, fine. I think it's released though. He's not in downtown. No. Perfect. No. Okay. The second question is uh, calls for service. You guys went to 2024. Uh, year to date, 2024, 5,300, and year to date in 2023 is 6,500. That service and first things are getting better, and I don't see that. This is your your down. Yeah. This is your today. This is the board. Okay. Uh, ask the question. I did. Okay. I don't have that in front of me. It's, Overall, it's, it's, a under, it's a thing that you uh, that we sent you. I'm assuming, but you've given us this down. Oh, okay. It's the it's number four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Calls for service. Yeah, I'm just waiting. So we went from uh, 6,500 to 53. I don't know what year to date means. That means up to now, I'm assuming. It's a thousand less. So that, yeah, same thing year to date. No? Yeah, and that's the total. Yeah. The rural and town. Yeah. One's 6,000, one's 5,000. So to me, it's getting better. But you also have to take a look and see which types of calls they are as oh, well. Oh, okay. So make yeah. it more worse kind of uh, it, Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. I think we're kind of holding you. our own overall. Yep. That makes sense, though. Thank you. Council Oh, I was just going to state, when we're talking total calls for service, it's going to be as accurate as the number of calls actually received for service. So that may or may not be an accurate reflection of what's happening in the community because people aren't calling things in, then it's obviously not going to show up in the total calls for service would be my guess. Okay, Councilor Bob. Uh, just reading the resource overview here, it says established set of regular members and current five, so they're still short officers. Mm -hmm. that. Yes. Um, I think you mentioned before, there's hope that there's going to be more about it. It won't be immediate, but yeah. there's hope, and I'm getting it from two different lines, okay. so that's good. So is there a, right now, the way the RCMP works, is there certain times of the 24-hour period where they're not in service? I don't want to discuss that when we're being recorded okay. and it's open to the public. Okay. Uh, if that was possible, would there be possibilities on shift changes altering the clock for the shifts? The shift schedule is has been and does get adjusted to accommodate the calls to service. Okay, thank you. Sir Borcha. Uh, just looking at the report here, it's dated October 15th, so that uh, statistics there for calls of service are only up to the October 15th. So you all, you have a, over two and a half months. Or actually, it's quarter one, it's not even to the... That might not be right. I don't know. That could be a type of error. I'm not sure. Anyhow. Okay. Any uh, further discussion or questions? Go ahead. Is there anything that this council can do that would help your performance of the RCMP in the council? Is there something you can push forward? Um, both Lance and, and Derek have been pretty open with the communication. Okay. I, I get the strong feeling that the town has been very much engaged in supporting our city and doing the things that we need. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further from yourself? No, no, it's just if we were in camera, there's just a couple of things I would have said about, but that's fine. This, yeah, this, we this can do all that good. another time. We'll sure. just try to make sure that we, make a, that we can accommodate that. Yeah, and this is pretty comprehensive, yeah. I think. Okay. Uh, I want to say on behalf of Council and Alice Swan River, you know, again, thank you for the service and also for all the team that uh, work in that office every day and dealing with the issues that we have in our community. It's not an easy thing and, and uh, we will do on our, our part uh, when we visit ministers and uh, government people at the AMM and lobby for some of the things that we need to see change in our community and, and uh, in this province. Thank you. All right.
Thank you. You're not old enough to have a lifetime membership. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on to 7, 7.1. Resolve the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Balvik. Discussion. Go ahead. Uh, just the fluoride report I added on uh, after the weekend. I uh, had a couple of uh, members of the council uh, who just asked for some information. Thanks for doing that. Um, it's interesting that uh, uh, the province of Alberta's level, uh, whatever that benchmark is, if it's Manitoba, I think it's 1.5, and Alberta, I think it's somewhere like 2.4. So that's surprising because it's like we go off the Canadian. Well, the WHO says 1.5, so it's kind of interesting to see that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, we're moving on. Uh, council reports. We'll start with Councillor Bobbick. Uh, not too much to report. Uh, watershed, we had a meeting last week there. We uh, just let everybody know we're looking for projects for next year. We've pretty well got them all done for this year. A pretty successful year. Uh, there's a possibility of uh, Swan Lake Watershed. We'll be looking at doing a tour next year for all the watersheds. Uh, in Manitoba, that will be uh, none of them have come this far north before. Uh, we look at the probabilities. We will probably be looking for something like 70 hotel rooms, three-day things, so pieces of all informed. That's pretty much it. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor White. Pretty busy. Uh, we had our Cal meeting on the 22nd of October, and we well, as usual, look at strategic plans, which we always work towards. And on the 29th, sort of a bittersweet day for me, and I'm sure all of council and the community, we had a special meeting with the CAO Pool, where we accepted his resignation uh, with significant uh, sadness on, on all our part. I can say that. I uh, want to wish him well in your future endeavors. I'm not sure what those people you're working with, but I'm sure it'll be wonderful, good people. And uh, we'll miss you, and you will be doing a great job for us. So thank you, sir. You're going because going you want to go, and you've got a new challenge. Good for you. Uh, November 1, uh, our medical service team met, uh, Reed Bierman, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, and myself, and we had the opportunity to uh, meet with a, a young doctor who's looking for a place to stay. Uh, we looked at different avenues to fund those people, and how much money, if we fund them, how much do we get back over time, which is uh, something to consider. And uh, that's always interesting with medical services. And we're looking at some, some other programs relative to international medical graduates so we can speak in the pot. And at that time, like five days, we talked about rural interest groups, and I'll follow up on that later. On uh, November the 4th, I met with the LP SAC committee, the stakeholders committee. And I found it interesting they advised us they have an extension on their license. They do not have a new accepted MOU. They have an extension on their license, which they're happy with. It's a, I believe it's, they said it was a five year and they're optimistic that that will work out. And the other uh, communities involved had MOUs, the three First Nations communities did get MOUs. Uh, tomorrow and Thursday, uh, Mr. Poole and I meet with EcoStrat, a, a global company looking at the possibility of doing some work with our community, our valley, so I'm uh, looking forward to that. And today I got a note, as I'm sure all the rest of you did, uh, from you know, Prairie Mountain Health that on February 9th, 2025, we're going to have 20 to 30 first and second uh, R ones R two ready to go to work doctors. They doctors already, and they're going to come to Swan River Valley for three or four days, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully we will give them a Swan Valley uh, welcome. So I'll be calling on all council. They may make a list of jobs they may want: door prizes, dinner, whatever. So getting 20 to 30 young doctors in our community at one time, and they're all world people. We're not going to city guys. And, could have trained, you could have started there. I feel like it's a special group, so I'm excited about that coming our way. 
So uh, put February 9th, 2025 on your calendar if you're not serving pancakes or something, we'll find you something to do. As we will, if the community wants to help you more than welcome to get in touch with yourself or a deputy mayor memorial. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Medley. Oh, I attended the Shorts Committee meeting, Cal Community Safety Well Meet, Well Being Planning Committee meeting, as well as the Community of Practice meeting. Uh, during the Cal meeting, when the community CSWB project was being discussed, there seemed to be some confusion regarding who owned the project, whether it was the town or the community. So that did come up in discussion during the planning committee meeting, and it was clarified that the project is in fact community owned. Uh, municipal government will not, nor should we, be the authority and the sole resource for implementing said safety well-being plan. So it definitely needs to be a community approach with various groups, organizations, and levels of government, and even members of the community all working together and doing our part to be successful in a community safety well-being plan. Also in the planning meeting, it was discussed how other communities are recognizing this and municipal representation for municipal governments and other areas are coming to the table ready to engage in open conversations, including conveying messages to the planning and advisory committees, which are comprised of various community groups and organizations in their local area, that this is not within our municipal authority, but how can we help you be successful in implementing solutions for our community? It was noted that where there is overlap of representation between uh, multiple community safety well-being projects, that Swan River is the only community in which municipal representation is not engaged in such discussions or efforts on that level. At the community of practice meeting, it focused on actually Dauphin and Brandon sharing the results from their community engagement meetings. So they shared how they went about engaging the groups from advertising, locations they chose, activities during the sessions, incentives, etc. They shared the feedback from meeting with seniors, newcomers and immigrants, people with disabilities, and the business sector. The business sector did express more concern for crime. However, overall, most demographics, the seniors, newcomers, immigrants, uh, people with disabilities, were not as concerned with the crime and reported a low concern for crime against persons in downtown areas. Their safety concerns were focused more on environmental, such as businesses and public sidewalks, walkways and parks and community spaces lacking accessibility access, icy and snowpack roads and sidewalks in the winter, lack of mental health supports as well as supports and services for seniors, concerns for affordable public transportation within the community as well as outside, so getting to medical appointments in Brandon or Winnipeg, for example, was another concern voice for those groups. And one approach used during many of the engagement sessions mentioned included the use of a large map of, their, of the city where they would actually ask the participants to, uh, in their engagement and whatnot, they would actually ask them to mark areas of the city that they find safe and or unsafe as they went through their engagement. And it was asked, I was asked by members of our planning committee if I could bring forward to council and ask if it might be possible for the town to provide large maps of the town when we started doing our engagement process so that we could provide those to the, those sessions so that we might be able to replicate the same uh, whatnot. In regards to the letter that Councillor White just mentioned with regards to the doctors coming to town, I actually found it very interesting that it was mentioned that the doctors that are coming are actually very interested and the addictions and mental health services we have in our community because they have heard that they are of a superior caliber. So I found that very interesting. And it would be nice to have more medical supports in that area. Got it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Boychuk. Uh, well, we had the October 22nd Cal. Uh, we also had an October 24th meeting for general government. 
and November 4th was a meeting with the Legacy Committee and Rec Committee regarding the grant applications that we are working together on and submitting. And upcoming is tomorrow the AGM for the Chamber of Commerce. So if uh, there's any business people or community-minded individuals that want to come out and join that effort, it's tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at the Chamber of Commerce building. And then November 7th is another uh, meeting with the Legacy Committee and Rec Committee uh, regarding grants. Uh, there's another one that we're submitting that is due right away the following week. And that is what wraps up everything today for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Well, a few meetings. Uh, I had this similar CSWB or Community Safety Well-Being Plan meetings on uh, the 24th and 30th. Um, general government meeting uh, to tie up and continue on with some discussions related to that committee. Um, a special meeting on the 28th. October 30th, I uh, joined in on the Ray Mountain Health AGM uh, to present uh, our an the annual report from the board to that. I guess the biggest highlight there uh, regarding uh, PMH would be the ongoing staffing shortages and physician shortages, but uh, uh, the ultimate uh, $29 million deficit that was reported uh, by the board uh, in previous years uh, due to budgetary sh shortfalls that uh, we had predicted uh, at the beginning of the year uh, to the province, but uh, due to COVID accounting and uh, various uh, funding shortfalls from the province, uh, that's where the uh, SDO uh, sits at the last fiscal year. There's a $29 million budgetary shortfall. So, uh, this year is not looking any better with a very similar number going forward. So, uh, again, a lot of pressure is being put on by the province to deliver certain types of services and, and directions, uh, but again, not enough funds to actually go with it to maintain those uh, services. So, uh, the PMH board is going to have to have some uh, very serious discussions and uh, decisions to make, but they're right at that point again, uh, where this year is on track for the exact same uh, situation. Uh, November 1st, uh, His Worship and I and CEO Poole, we met with uh, Minister uh, Bernadette Smith uh, from Housings and Addictions uh, here. Uh, we had a, a very good uh, discussion with her, bringing some of the community uh, concerns forward regarding to the, uh, the Sharps disposals issues and the homelessness uh, issues. And that, uh, I think we relayed as best we can where uh, we feel and where we need to go, uh, that we do fully support uh, treatment centers and stuff that need to be, but under certain conditions and with that. But, uh, and then also relate to her that uh, Manitoba Housing um, has a significant uh, inventory of unused houses in the community, but they lack the appropriate funds to actually make them uh, brought up to uh, a level of I don't know what the word habitable, habitable um, condition to actually put people in. Um, so I don't know if that was news to her or not, but uh, she did uh, take a lot of our conversation back. Uh, and hopefully they'll take it to heart. And then today in question period, she did announce um, that uh, the government will be directing the SDOs or the RHAs to, uh, as part of the uh, harm reduction funding and that, that they have to do a cleanup portion of the, uh, so she did announce that in the house today. So, um, and then on November uh, 1st again, as uh, Councilor White mentioned, the uh, Services Committee met with uh, uh, a resident here that's doing some uh, residency work uh, that will be completed shortly. So to see what his intentions are and see if he'd be interested in staying in the Valley. Um, and then yesterday again, His Worship and uh, CEO Pru and myself, uh, we met with, uh, CMHA, um, uh, Mr. Wigley, and his um, uh, the CEO of uh, CMHA Manitoba, Marion, I can't remember her Cooper. last name, Cooper, um, as a result of some of the discussions uh, moving forward from our resolutions and uh, CSWB 
Uh, and it was a very good conversation, a very uh, frank and blunt conversation where I think uh, we definitely uh, uh, came to uh, common ground as to where we need to be. Uh, I, I was very pleased with it. Um, and I think uh, uh, as a result of that meeting, I took some clear understandings as to where we need to, to be with the openness and being on the front end of communication so that the public is fully involved and in what the CMHA's mandate is and their agreement that they need to do a public meeting to let that be known as what their actual mandates are and what they are for and what they're not for um, and what they want to support and want to work with the town and actually even moving forward with uh, putting out uh, a joint working together statement that uh, we are going to work together um, on the issues and, and in an openness and transparent manner. And that is all I have. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Paul. Um, okay, I think all meetings, everything's been kind of mentioned here pretty much. Um, the Cal special meetings, um, legacy committee meetings. Um, we did meet with the library recently and um, there's some new changes. We had a board meeting with them, and uh, there's some new ch changes that are going to happen there. So uh, they've got some new hours. They're going to start opening um, Tuesday and Thursday nights to try. So that's going to be a, a new thing. For uh, I think they've had lots of people inquiring to be there a little bit later after work so they can come. Um, we also have like lots of craft nights planned for December and uh, getting kids into the library. It really is a busy place. There is a lot of people that, that attend our library. And um, I think, uh, I think it's, it's a really great thing with the, the library being there. Um, they had the Spooktoberfest this year, and it was a great hit. Like, um, I think uh, there was, the library had a lot to do with it, and I know Bev and Donna Jean took, took the uh, reins of that. And um, I think they made quite a bit of money there, and so they've got some great ideas to put into the library for that. Um, I guess just, uh, I guess another thing with, the library, I guess we, we did discuss this at, um, and maybe just to, uh, to throw it out there, is that the summer grant for summer students this year, the grant is early, so it, it's due by December 19th this year. Normally you have until close to the time the summer student, you know, end of March. Those applications have to be in this year between November 18th to December 19th, so if you have summer students, that's the time for sure. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I think that's um, about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, yeah, I've attended several different uh, community meetings, uh, as everyone else has. Uh, just some takeaways. Um, in the discussion, I was invited to the Sharp Committee uh, meeting, and um, out of that meeting, there was some discussion, of course, on how to you know control or start to do this cleanup process. And um, they talked about uh, mapping the community uh, and different ideas of what they can do to see where kind of the, the hot spots, if you want to call, uh, of where a lot of the, the littering, if you want to call, is happening. Um, they talked a little bit about uh, sharp disposal units or, or uh, disposal units uh, placed throughout different parts of the community. And um, that's where the next kind of conversation led was, you know, how much engagement that was actually done in the community. And it was learned there that there has not been a lot of engagement uh, through harm reduction. And so that is the next part. And I had told them that I really believe that they need to engage in the community, not just members of council and, and, and agencies, but to the public itself, the business community and so forth. So. That's something that uh, we'll hear a little bit more on the next meeting here uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Minister Smith, the meeting with, uh, with her uh, wasn't bad. Um, we heard a little bit about kind of the same things that kind of going on, but uh, still a long ways to go. Um, uh, the, it was mentioned that, that uh, she had said that the uh, agencies like uh, Prairie Mountain Health will work on the, the cleanup or initiate some of this cleanup and so that's still has to be organized and how that's going to work but i guess it was mentioned that she had announced that in the, in the ledge today but it's still a long ways because we're still seeing people posting or complaining about 
needles that are in the community. And in fact, last week I was told that uh, harm reduction needle distribution had been suspended, but I don't know if that's continuing on. I think public health is still continuing on uh, in what uh, capacity, I can't really say, but uh, it was mentioned. Uh, I do agree that the meeting with CMHA yesterday uh, with Mr. Wigley and, and of course, uh, Marion Cooper, that's the Chief Executive Officer, um, she, uh, she brought a lot of stuff to light that we didn't know about. And, uh, and I thought it was, it was pretty good. And the biggest thing is, is that it was the statement that was made that they have no desire for a homeless shelter. They are not advocating, they are not looking for funds to build one at, in any way, shape or form. They are focusing on um, their uh, service or support to, to individuals that need that in the community. And so I found that was uh, quite interesting. And so yeah, we, we got to understand a little bit more about what the agency is, is about. And, uh, and, and we're gonna have an opportunity to visit with them hopefully when we uh, go down to the city uh, during the AMM. But the biggest part about the whole thing in that last month of talking about this and bringing this to the community and to the uh, government and ministers and the premier, and that is, the, the lack of public consultation. And, and this is what I'm hearing now that Prairie Mountain Health is talking about having a, a public meeting. And uh, I think that CMHA is now starting to talk about because we learned that a little bit yesterday and what that might look like. But that's been lacking. And we talk of communication. Are we perfect at it ourselves? No. The province, we learned a little bit more about maybe the province needs to be a little bit more uh, communicating different things. And as an example, the the Timberland project, you know, and, and why the province never really uh, um, announced that or, or made us aware of what was happening. So I found that to be um, a common thing with the, uh, the communications to the public and, and, and allow public to have some say in, in this whole thing that we're dealing with in our community. And there's far more on top of that. We, we know that. Um, one other thing is uh, last night I attended our RISE meeting, it was the first RISE meeting in, in some time, and uh, we talked about um, this uh, business opportunity guide that we've been working on, and this is collecting <coughs> data or information that we can put into this magazine that will attract, if it's business or individuals, to Swan River and the Swan River Valley, and that would be to promote or to you know highlight <coughs> uh, local operations, if it's a grocery store, if it's a egg company, or if it's the backwoods and, and trails and everything else. It doesn't matter if it's in Benito, if it's in Birch River, or Bozeman, or wherever, in, in downtown Swan River too. So it's it's getting there. It's a big project and it, it looks good, and, but we still have a long ways to go. And there's so many agencies and, and people that are part of this whole thing. So it's slowly coming together, but um, it's, it's just taking a little bit of time. One of the comments that were made last night because the town of Swan River has not <coughs> submitted our uh, portion of support for RISE for 2024 is because obviously we have a, a, uh, a, pardon? a requirement, thank you, uh, that they have to provide uh, audited financial statements. RISE has spent probably maybe less than a thousand dollars in 2022 or 23 so um there will be a letter that will be coming to council asking if they would for, uh, forgive that for this year because to get an audited financial statement it would cost the municipalities between five and three thousand dollars to have that so anyway i'm not going to mention anything more about it but there will be a letter that will come to council about uh, about that requirement Anyway, I think that is it for me. I, I just want to make another comment, though, uh, with the reports. Everybody does a really good job, most of, of the reports, but sometimes the privilege, uh, member's privilege kind of sneaks in there, too. So let's uh, be cautious about that, too. So with that uh, CAO report, one of his uh, last ones, I guess, as we move on. So. Not the last. No, no, one of your last ones. Yeah, one of the last several ones. <laughs> the, uh, the the report that council got tonight is a strategic plan your midterm report. So this is not for any discussion tonight. It's for your information on 
for council to review and just see how you're doing halfway through your term. So according to our strategic plan that we made uh, several years ago, but there's some pretty encouraging uh, stats in here. We did take each objective and, and show council what we've achieved, what's ongoing, what's incomplete, and, uh, and we did use a pending uh, item, but in overall, we're, we're, we've either achieved or, or have projects ongoing at over 76% uh, halfway through so it, it's not too bad and then of course we've highlighted some of our heavy hitters like the CT scanner uh, networking with the provincial governments the GIS unit just uh, I just feel it's a really good report it's something we can get out to the public to show uh, your rate payers exactly what you're doing good idea. Yeah. as for the office uh, you know continue to work on HR issues we're finalizing the AMM minister uh, meetings for council uh, preparing the board of revision for tonight. Uh, we have the, the interim CAO search and the full-time CAO search uh, RFP complete and going out to to consultants for, for to meet with council. Uh, we do we're implementing also as as his worship said uh, just an education piece. It's similar to the previous town on notice, but just an education piece so that people understand what harm reduction is. And, whose jurisdiction it's in, what power we have, things like that. So it's the first of many to get the public uh, educated. Uh, and then just on a note, I, I just wanted to give the support out to the school division for how they've handled the, the issues over the past few days. They're going through tough times. But I just wanted to show up to, to Rob and his team that they're doing a good job. And, and just a reminder to everyone, to show up next Monday, maybe at the Cenotaph for the Legion. Uh, it's going to be a nice morning, four degrees, so uh, for Remembrance Day. And we'll be very very Yeah, thank you, and, and thanks for saying that. Uh, would you have a question, Council Member? Uh, yeah. Um, in regards to the um, mid report, I absolutely agree. It would be something that is great to produce for the public on an annual basis, not even just a midway through, but I'll follow up with an email because there's a few in here that I've got marked and highlighted that are actually marked as achieved, like have the letter A, but I feel it might be confusing for the public. Like it's great to have what has been achieved in the achieved outcomes and notes part, but some of them I think are literally ongoing things, so they will extend throughout the plan and continue on. So have we achieved certain aspects? Absolutely, but there's always room for more. So I'll maybe just send an email and follow up with that just so that um, it won't be as confusing for the public that it's a kind of done thing. It's, this is what we've done, but we still continue to engage. Is it? Okay, anybody else? Okay. So um, we'll shall move on to eight new business eight point one. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's back here. Thank you. Seven three one resolve the two thousand twenty four strategy plan midterm report be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, second by Councilor Powell. Discussion. All in favor. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Service District financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2023, being received. Moved by Councillor Woodchuck, second by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Okay. Um, the vet board did meet the, the, the levy and everything will basically stay the same as you see in the next uh, resolution. And uh, we do have a new, uh, I shouldn't do this in my report, but I do apologize, but we do have a, a new member from uh, Manitoba's Bozeman, uh, Councillor uh, Gail Langley. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 
Okay, 8.2, Resolve of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Service District 2024 Municipal Contribution in the amount of $7,204.50 be approved for full payment. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Let's carry. 8.3. Where in subsections 169.5 of the Municipal Act, council, council may authorize an expenditure for an amount that's not provided for an op, for in an op, Sorry, we, we've done this before. I don't yeah, know why I, this resolution is on here. This is, this is for the report on the process of how that happened. So it's, that's it's why I kind of stopped. I thought I read this before. Yeah, that, uh, that's a mistake. That should just be to receive the report. Okay. So I can you're going to fix that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe at uh, our last meeting we approved the payment uh, and the check it went, but we need a resolution to actually take the funds out of reserve to go towards that because it wasn't as part of the financial plan. You what this is for. Is that correct, CFO Guinea? Council passed a resolution to take the funds out of reserve at a previous meeting. I don't know why this resolution is on okay. for tonight. So I will I will just accept the procedure report. Resolve the table and chair purchase procedure report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Uh, I was going to ask Director Council if she had any comments, but go ahead. Um, I was going to say, I uh, understand things were new and there's some transition there that. Uh, and the product is here going forward and there's probably some learning from all aspects so we move on yeah we've we've met uh this is just so council knows that we understand exactly what's happened in the future you would receive a report as opposed to the resolution of purchase that uh, that this was made with with the council's options not that that's going to happen in the future Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.4. Whereas community participation in municipal elections is important, and whereas community involvement in local government decision making is essential to an act, a healthy and democratic system, and whereas community understanding of municipal government operations and the services it provides is of primary importance to the meaningful participation at the local level. Now therefore be it known that the Town of Swan River Council does hereby proclaim the week of November 25th, or sorry, November 21st to uh, November 25th, 2024 as Local Government Awareness Week. I don't think that week is right. It should be November the 18th? Just yeah. Say yeah, I, I, I said that because I knew that was wrong, but I don't know the actual dates. I guess I can look on the calendar. The 24th or 30th? So last week in November? Yeah, it would make sense if that was the week. Um, It'll be the 25th to 29th. The 25th? So November 25th to November 29th, 2024, as Local Government Awareness Week. Moved by 
uh, Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven point one. Resolve the accounts as follows: Be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number three two one four three to number three two two one eight, totaling one hundred fifty seven thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and fifty eight cents. It's listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number five five zero zero to number five five zero four, totaling one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred sixty eight dollars. It's listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $825 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling $41,575.29 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.2. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by the Manitoba Assessment Services on October the 22nd or 23rd be made to the 2024 property tax roll with the result increases totally $245.55 and resulting in reductions totaling $1,460.02. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works that under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and where a sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $2,224.02. Therefore, may it resolve that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding tax roll and collected in that manner. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective December 1, 2024. Moved by... Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.4. Resolve the financial statements for the nine months ending December the 30th, 2024, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio. Seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion. Go ahead. Um, CFO Ganita, uh, maybe you can help me here just for some points of clarification. Under other revenue, uh, we have uh, conditional uh, funding from, or conditional federal funding of $85,000. Is that the EcoStrat grant, or what? what is that? Yes, that's mostly the Coast Guard. Okay, and then between yourself and maybe uh, Director Clausen, I see that the Centennial Arena admin expenses is 48% over budget, and then uh, uh, the Recreation and Wellness is significantly under budget uh, for this time of the year. Uh, is there reasons why that was just as a coding between hours from one place to the other? There was a couple things that'll put the arena over. We had to do some electrical work in the offices because the breakers kept blowing, so that wasn't budgeted for. But we couldn't we couldn't work. We kept pulling the breaker every 20 minutes and have to go flip it. So that was 
I, I don't know the amount offhand, but um, that I have to go back and look at the expenses and see if something is going so, wrong. So that that's not only wages; that's repair because because you got a repairs and maintenance line. Um, yeah. So. I'd have to take a closer look at it. And then CFO Ganita, uh, can you just tell us, uh, since we're, uh, this is September, so we've got three months left as to what's the financial standing of the town as, as it relates to our budget. Are we on track for uh, uh, what we budgeted or are we going to be under or some type of surplus position? As, the, as things stand, we're on track. But, uh, for the previous question, uh, there's been a change in how uh, Lana's wages or her salary is allocated. Before, she was 50% Veterans Hall, 50% programming, but uh, that got changed to being split between arena, pool, hall, and parks. So you asked about the administrative expenses. Uh, that's due to that change in how her time is allocated. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything, uh, anything further? Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, members privilege. Councilor Medwin. Well, I, as I mentioned before, I attended the Manitoba CFPP annual convention in AGM that took place on October 26th. I've had some great uh, presentations on SEPTED, which is Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, from our RCMP Division D Liaison, Sergeant Paul Hami, uh, Winnipeg Police Service, uh, their liaison presented on the current drugs of choice and the impacts on communities. Uh, Manitoba Justice did presentations on the community mobilization and community safety well-being and Gov Fox presented on effective meeting strategies and the value of doing so as a nonprofit and volunteer group. So it was very well attended and we had some, I might be a little biased being that I sit on the board, but I think we were for some very relevant uh, presentations for our members. Um, I did also hear that the uh, CMHA tours uh, included Bruce Oak Recovery Center and they are open to all of council while we're down in Winnipeg for the AMM. So I am looking forward to participating in those. And I'm very happy to hear that the library programming is really taking off again and that they're going to be opening up in the evening because I am actually well aware that the, pro the library is a very busy place and the evening hours were very much uh, appreciated by the business people who are otherwise working during library hours and have difficulties getting down there. It allows them to peruse at their leisure for um, books and reading material and socialize. And I was excited to see that some of their programming is going to possibly extend into adults. Not that I usually have time, but. <laughs> <laughs> but for those who do, it was great to see. I'm very happy for our library. That's so, all I have. Okay. Councilor Bobby. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but I'd like to mention again. I've had the opportunity in the last five weeks to deal with a lot of medical people, and hats off to all these people. Uh, I'll tell you a story of a doctor in Brandon that when he met with me, he was a little late and had explained to me that he had to tell a young woman that she had six months to live. We have to take this into consideration when these people work for us, the, the stress and the stuff that they go through. They probably don't get a lot of happy news in their jobs, so uh, again, hats off to all of them. Uh, just to mention, Councilor, or Deputy Mayor Morio, your post on Facebook about the pictures, uh, uh, great idea, I'd like to see what Thank you. Yeah. Um, one other thing uh, happened to be on Facebook is that anybody seen the sidewalk picture of certain towns have done where they do the red and the white and then do a cameo of a soldier on their sidewalk? I think that's something we should look into if we can grab a price somewhere or something. I'll maybe 
grab that dog by the tail and see where we can go with it. And just to announce that yesterday was a really special day for Mr. Lucas Bobbick, is one year old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Council White. Uh, within the Wildlife Federation meeting, 250 of our constituents, many of them were anyway, and uh, the only concern they had there was uh, things that are happening in resource management. They would just encourage more consultation, a word that we all agree on, so I think that's an important concept. Uh, sport fish on the 29th. Uh, those young guys and our, our technicians looked at 75 new lakes in addition to doing the regular jobs with the possibility of stocking other lakes with trout, exotic species, whatever. And we're working on developing our family fishing day, which is, as far as I know, it's free. You guys pay for it with your dinner tickets. October 30th, uh, Smothail Outdoors. Uh, this Saturday the 9th is the dinner, prime rib. Uh, we've given, they, that committee has given $130,000 back into the valley since their inception. So uh, pretty excited. I think there's about 20 tickets left. I hope. I also like to publicly acknowledge uh, the passing of Bob Sopak, our MP, and uh, he was a big Swan Valley supporter. He supported a lot of things that we did. Big fan of LP. He's did a lot of work with LP. And I'm wondering if somewhere I'm going to get a status of the cameras the next little while. So where are we going? How are we getting there? Where have we been? I think I'd, I'd like to know that. And. Uh, Councilor Medwood shared with some really good points as to the staff sergeant about the top COPP and I'd sure like to see a, an update of where COPP is, where they've been, where they're going, the wonderful progresses they've made, the number of people that are involved in COPP and its future. So I sow that seed for Councilor Medwood that to educate your team here and or the community at the same time. So thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Boychuk. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of build on uh, what uh, Councillor Bobbitt uh, mentioned as far as the uh, health care services provider. I know uh, a coworker of mine actually has had a doctor from, it's in vagina, but call on holidays, on weekends, on evenings, getting updating uh, updates from her regarding the issues that they're, they're dealing with, and it was uh, super... Uh, unexpected and, and welcome that these individuals take that time out of their lives and are that dedicated to their job. Uh, on that note, I, I have to uh, um, mention our light RCMP staff here uh, with incidents like we have had over the past uh, week or so. They're called on even more heavily than their regular day-to-day -day, um, scheduling and are filling in and doing extra things over and above what they normally are and aren't getting days off and are working long extended hours and I have to thank them for all that they do. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mayor Morio. Um, a couple things. Um, again, uh, with Councillor uh, White said uh, condolences to the Bob Sopak family. Uh, and also, I was saddened to hear uh, the passing of Justice Sinclair. Uh, I did know that guy uh, or individual uh, a great deal, but I did meet him a few times, and he was a, a speaker at uh, the Crime Summit that we had in, in Winnipeg, and uh, he did speak very well. He was a, he's a very knowledgeable individual that uh, uh, always looked for the happy medium and the both sides of the story and not one side or the other so um, it's uh, a sad day for individuals like that that could uh, under the truth and reconciliation to move things forward where um, not just advocating from one side or the other but to bring both sides together so um, understanding uh, the last few days and the, uh, the last few uh, months um, um, has been difficult for this community and we will get through this Slowly, eventually, we surely will work through it, and, and we'll get it uh, uh, through it uh, one way or the other. Um, and as Councillor Bobbick had mentioned uh, over the weekend, I, I made a post for people to send me uh, pictures uh, in regarding to um, disposed needles, but not just the bad, but the good, because I'm putting together a document as an addendum uh, that we can present to the ministers when we meet to them of, of the good, the bad, and the ugly of what. The residents see because uh, these a lot of these individuals are in the city and all they see is black and white reports on paper and the picture shows a thousand words as to what the communities are going through 
Um, so thank you to the public that's sending me stuff. And, and yes, there is good and bad and ugly in the pictures. Uh, there are some people where it's some of the, uh, the needles are in old water bottles and they're capped. They're just not put in a proper disposal uh, container, just left in a, in a regular garbage, which is better than just on the ground. So, uh, so that's all getting there. I'm not, I'm not painting one side. But I'm also, I found it interesting, um, um, and I'm you know, moving forward some research on it, uh, and then I'll bring uh, this to council for discussion. But I find it interesting that uh, it's probably similar all over, but I'm researching Manitoba only. Uh, that we have rules and regulations and, and, and laws uh, determining when, where, and how you can consume alcohol, smoking, cannabis, but there doesn't seem to be much of an enforcement or rules uh, when it comes to illegal substances, which I can't go to a liquor store and buy a, a beer and then drink it on Main Street, but yet, yet I can go get a needle and shoot up on Main Street and no one bats an eye. It, just, it seems weird to me. So I just want to do some research on that, get the facts, bring that to on what is in the acts on that and bring it to council to look forward to, to see how we can put that in the mix of advocating this cause and getting it fixed. Because I just find that weird. So, and that's all for the mix. Okay, thank you and thank you for doing that. Uh, Councillor Powell. Um, okay, just a few things. Um, just to, you know, just to congratulate CMHA on their on their building. Um, if anybody gets a chance to, I actually I went in there before and it actually opened that day and took a peek and it's they've got they've got it so nicely done in there. It's beautiful. Um, there's lots of services, lots of supports on both sides. They've got two sides, one for youth and one for adults. So it's really it's really well well put together in there. Um, other big thing, uh, the, the Albert Charger Friendship Center has their 56th annual AGM. That's on December, ah, uh, no, November the 26th, I believe it is. And um, yeah, if you, if you want to come to the annual AGM, that's that's what it is. Do I have the wrong date? That's a good one. No. Okay, so I have the wrong date here. December 3rd. December 3rd. I'm hoping that's right. Anyway, um, so yeah, so the AGM is coming up. If you want, um, if you haven't got your membership or if you want to buy your membership, you can buy your membership before November 26th. That's what it is. Um, another huge thing is the condolences to, yes, Maurice and Claire. Uh, uh, um, huge loss. Huge loss for Manitoba. Huge, huge loss for Canada in general. Because he's put, you know, so much effort into Indigenous and everybody, for everybody. everybody. Uh, November 11th is, um, uh, November 11th, we have a, a Remembrance Day, and we, we, you know, if everybody can make it down there, that'd be great. Um, also a big shout out that, um, November 8th is also Indigenous Veterans Day. Uh, we don't have anything planned right now at the Friendship Center, but I, I know there might be something going on somewhere along the way, but, yeah. Um, I, I guess this is the other big thing. There's so much happening. We've got so much uh, happening with hockey in our community right now. It's amazing. Like it, it's a really, really is. The people that are coming into our valley, they come in from everywhere. Like every weekend we see people from all over the place. And it's the rink is a happening place. It's a clean place. We've had nothing but great, uh, great uh, feedback to, uh, to us there. That um, It's a great, clean place. We've had really, really great. So uh, kudos to you and your team over there at the rink. Where do all these guests stay? <laughs> okay, thank you, Council White. You can, Pardon? Well, I'm going to go on with my report now. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know if Council Powell can answer my question, but um, you know what? You talked about you know the last little while of, of a lot of you know bad things. Uh, you know, we, it seems to get the publicity. You know, we talk about. The needles that in the in the news, or you know, the unfortunate unfortunate circumstance that happened over the week, uh, over the weekend, and uh, we have to focus on good things, positive things, and this community has a lot of that. The valley has a lot of that, and and often we don't, 
you know, showcase that. And I know that's one of the things that we talked about in your eyes last night, and that is to uh, let's start to showcase a little bit more of the positive things of the community that will make things healthier, make us better. And uh, sure, some people dwell on negative stuff and, 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 uh, and gossip, whatever, but there are some great things in this community, and, and, and each of you all mentioned a lot of the good things uh, that go on here, if it's in the Swan River or around the valley, you know, and when we get together and we celebrate or, or uh, just visit and, and talk about um, the good things too, because there's lots of that, but we don't publicize that enough. And, uh, and I think we need to, to work on that a little bit better. On that, um, just in the last couple of weeks, I was walking in the park and, and um, there was a guy down there playing disc golf. And uh, I walked over and chatted with him for a while. And he's a you know, uh, visitor to our community. And I asked him, how did you like the course? And he goes, it's awesome. He said, this is probably one of the tougher courses that he's been on, actually. He's from Calgary. And he said, it's amazing that a community your size has something like this. And he said, and look at your park. He said, you guys have an absolute wonderful park with all the things that you have in here. And so I'm thinking about, well, yeah, you know what? He's right. But as I'm walking, you know, I know that uh, we had donation of some solar lights that we installed. A few of us went down there and volunteered to install. And unfortunately, we had some rotten apples that went and popped them out of their sockets and did whatever they do with them. And, and um, that's unfortunate. But I truly believe, and, we, and I've talked about this in the past before, and I think that it's time for us to take a little bit, uh, take a you know, take a walk down in the park and see what the, the shape of the park is. It's it's in good shape, but it needs some. We need to put some money back into the park, and we need to. I really believe we need to invest in some lights down there. I know that Hydra was down there today, and they replaced all their units that um, that they're responsible for. But we have light standards that we don't have operating right now and I think it's important for people that like to be in the park if it's you know when it's getting to be darker or if it's uh, early in the morning and they like to have it lit up just for safety or just to be there so that's one thing I think the council really needs to have a look at and I encourage you to take a walk down there walk with me but also some of our paths are starting to fall apart the Rotarian started that whole thing I don't know how many years ago and uh, it's up to us to continue on and to keep the shape of the park where it is. So I know, uh, and this is, you know, uh, nothing on, on our recreation department who would do a, a wonderful job of what they can do and work with, but these are some of the things that the infrastructure uh, needs and requires, and we have a gem in this community, and if we want to keep it that gem, and uh, we need to do the proper investments in, in our park. So I think uh, keep that in mind for a 2025 budget. However we do that, uh, and I know it's just money that costs or grants and whatever, but uh, we can't let our, uh, our private, you know, good gems go to waste. So it's important. So I want you to all think about that. So with that, I will move on. One other thing I forgot to mention. Okay, go ahead. Uh, just out there to, to remember that uh, Remembrance Day is on November 11th and the annual uh, Remembrance Day ceremony at 11 or 10.45 at the Veterans Hall. <coughs> if you can be there, it'd be appreciative to show um, our remembrance and our appreciation to the people that uh, uh, fought for the freedom of this country and uh, ultimately gave their life to, to, for it. So it's the least we can do. Yeah, and actually on that, you know, just an amazing uh, project that the local legion took on to put the banners up of those fallen people that have uh, sacrificed their life to give what we have here today. So it's very important for us to reflect on what they did for us and all those that did come back but still had the scars of war. So I will go with uh, the rest of everybody else and I'll start with Mr. Harvey. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Legion and uh, Kyle worked on those banners. And I had a call from another community that was inquiring on them. Uh, they do a good job and it's nice to have stuff like that up. And then uh, I came here in the, at the end of 2014, and Derek's been my boss since then. And I've had lots of discussions with him 
over those years on difficult decisions and he always decided on what was best for the town. It was never what was easiest to do, it was what was best for the town. I really respect that, so I miss you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Clausen. I can't top that. Nothing for me tonight. <laughs> okay, CFO Gadita. CFO Ganeda. Okay. We don't have any communication there. Uh, CAO Poole. We'll go back to him if he's there. Uh, no, I I believe I said what I needed to say in my, in my report. Okay. All right. Then we should move on. CFO Ganeda, one last time. I'm here. I don't know why you can't hear me. Okay. Do you have anything to re uh, to uh, share uh, tonight, members' privilege? Can you hear me now? We can. Yes. Okay. I'm looking at an email that I sent back in June, asking for financials from Rise for the year ended 2023, and so I was given an interim balance sheet and a profit and loss. And I said, what about these things that were mentioned in the minutes? They're not in, in the reports that you've given. And so the chair of Rice said, oh, looks like two checks from before my time are in the handwritten registry, but not in QuickBooks. So that tells me that no one's recording anything in QuickBooks, no one's balancing the bank because if they had balanced the bank, they would know that not everything's been recorded. And so I'm still waiting for a complete set of financial statements. I heard tonight it's not going to be an audited one, but it should at least be complete and not yeah. just a partial list. Yeah, that was passed last night. You'll be getting that soon. Anything further? No. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, uh, we haven't gotten any kind of budget from Rise either, and I don't know every other organization. We get the budget first, and then we give them money according to the what's needed in the budget. Yeah, they don't meet. We haven't met very often, so that's still in the works. So you'll see that. All right, then we'll move on. Uh, we can move to in camera. We have something there. No, I, that was quite a while ago. We, yeah, I was going to say because I yeah. didn't, I didn't ask you to put anything in the camera. Yeah, no, I have nothing. Okay. All right. Well, then that, that is it. Then we will go to adjourn. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at nine o three p.m. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Medwood. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We are adjourned. Thank you.